Hey guys, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, wherever you are. Um, I woke up today and I read the headlines in Iceland that said panic around the country. And I'm like, whoa, what happened, right? Did they have to close the Blue Lagoon again? And now they're worried about their revenue? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. That Blue Lagoon seems to be open right now. It was closed yesterday because of the gas pollution, but it seems to be open because, but you know, you never know because since they, they're closing because of the toxic volcanic gas pollution, they never really put that on their website that they're closed. I haven't seen it. Um, we've talked about this yesterday. So panic around the country. What is happening, guys? And you know, since there's panic in Iceland, I thought today I'm going to wear my trigger shirt again. So whenever I wear this shirt that says United States, it seems to trigger some of my viewers. And guys, I really don't know why, but I get these comments. How dare you wearing a shirt that says United States while you're reporting about Iceland? So what's the friggin' problem? Am I allowed to wear a shirt of any other country? Is it just the United States? And you know, I love this shirt, especially because I love horses and it has this one on it. And that shirt has a history. I bought it in 2010 when there was the Olympics in Canada and there were these shirts everywhere. And I love it. And I love the United States. I've lived there for a while. I went to university there. And you know, seriously guys, um, I think we should all be allowed to wear whatever we want. And I don't think it's offensive to wear a United States shirt reporting about Iceland. And especially not since people from that country are the tourists that are coming to this country in large numbers, pouring money into their pots, right? And a lot of them are going to the Blue Lagoon. But today I don't want to talk about the Blue Lagoon. I want to talk about the panic around the country. If my dogs let me. So I want to talk about panic in the country and it's because of earthquakes. And we talked about it in my last video. An earthquake swarm started basically northwest of Grindavik in that land subsidence that was formed after the magma intrusion that happened on November 10th. So the land was subsiding there. So these were earthquakes. They say they think they're not related to magma coming there, but they really, they can't tell. They don't know. They say they have to monitor this. So, but they were more earthquakes during the night and during the day on Monday in Iceland. So at least three earthquakes have hit Reykjanesvik after 2 p.m. on Monday in Iceland. And that is over 80 kilometers south west of Reykjanes. So not in the area that we're closely monitoring right now around Grindavik and the Blue Lagoon. And there was also an earthquake under the ocean floor north of the country um, that was almost 200 kilometers north of Kolbenzay. And it was measured in 3.4 in size. So are they worried now that something might happen in the whole country? Is the North Atlantic Ridge really making a bigger move? You know, there's two tectonic plates moving away from each other. And Iceland basically sits on top of that moving away from each other and that's causing earthquakes along that line that goes through Iceland and you can even see it when you're in Iceland um, you can swim in it in some areas you can walk through it there's a little bridge so lots of tourists are flocking there and this movement this tearing apart allows sometimes cracks forming and magma coming to the surface, causing eruptions as well. So what is happening? Let's talk about uh, what the Icelandic Meteorological Office has released today to get a little bit of a broader overview. Um, they're talking about the eruption that has started on March 16th. So that crater is still spilling out the lava constantly. So there are no changes there. Also, the land Land rise underneath Sorsengi is still constant. The land keeps rising there. That means the magma chamber underneath the Blue Lagoon and the Sorsengi power plant is filling up with magma again, despite the fact that 
magma is flowing right out to the eruption, but there seems to be more magma coming up from the deeper magma reservoir, and that's why it's accumulating in the magma chamber again. But that hasn't changed since yesterday. They still haven't changed their risk assessment map. That is valid until tomorrow, and then we will see if something changes. Uh, the risk of gas pollution is still there. Um, I'll show you the graphs here, what the forecasts are. So it's going even into Keflavik and then it's turning around. So if you see, you can see the dates and the and the, the times of the day there. And if you go to that website, um, you can do it yourself. You can see how it's going. But also there you can see how many times and how quickly it can change during the day. And that's why I always keep saying to have the Blue Lagoon open, it's just kind of silly because it can change so quickly. And why take the risk to expose people to that? But as I said, I'll leave that alone, although it's hard for me, you know me, but I'll leave the Blue Lagoon alone for today for this video. So yesterday, just after noon in Iceland, a series of small earthquakes has began at Lagafell. That's an area that's just northwest of Grindavik. Um, and it, it did last until like uh, half past four in the yesterday, 4 p.m. Um, and there were about 90 tremors and the activity was the largest between 1 and 2 p.m. when in just one hour they measured 35 earthquakes. And all these earthquakes were under a magnitude of 1 and most of them were at a depth of 2 to 4 kilometers. But you know, don't be fooled by the lower magnitude. I know a lot of people say, well, if we have a 6 or a 7, that's a large earthquake. Yeah, but these are earthquakes that are if in other countries, they're not related to volcanic activity. So if we have these earthquake swarms with small tremors usually means something's going on. Magma's moving underground, grinding its way to get somewhere, or just a tension release. The scientists right now, they're thinking it's coming because the land is rising underneath Short Sengi again. And since there are so many fissures already in and around Grindavik, that this might have a change in intention because the land is rising in Swartzengi again, but they don't know for sure. They have made a map of the location of the earthquakes. And if you look at the maps, all the blue dots, they show the location of the earthquakes. And north of these dots, you see Mount Thorbjörn. And right behind Mount Thorbjörn, there is this magma chamber. There is Swartzengi power plant and the Blue Lagoon. And that's where the magma is accumulating. So it might be related. And then you see another graph with the darker blue dots that is showing the depth of the earthquakes, how deep they go. So they're basically all moving within that certain range. So they're not going deeper. So they're all pretty much in the same like area. Then they have released um, that graph here where you can see the magnitude, the size of the earthquakes that happened there. And you can see it's really clustered and then it dies down. And then you see the, the big blue bars that shows the accumulated number of earthquakes um, and at the bottom, the number of earthquakes per hour. Uh, so all these images show that there were several small earthquakes recorded in this area yesterday afternoon. But what is obvious if you look at these pictures, so after midnight, um, today starting there was no seismic activity that has been recorded there but in other areas of Iceland and that's why it seems that the country is in panic. What they're saying um, about the seismic activity about these 90 tremors um, they compare it to what we have already seen uh, in March, a few days before actually this eruption occurred. So that's why they're saying the seismic activity is not a sign of any changes in the activity of the volcano that has remained fairly stable in its lava flow over the weekend. They're saying the seismic activity northwest of Grindavik is also not a sign that magma is on the move under that area. But you know, the only thing that 
makes me scratch my head a little bit. We have seen the same thing in March, and then a few days later, we have seen the eruption. So could this be an indication that maybe the eruption might get bigger again, or that something might happen? They're saying no, but they're also saying that they know that they don't really know. Um, what they're saying is that at the time, you know, when they measured the seismicity um, that was in the subsidence northwest of Vindavik, they don't think that it's likely that larger earthquake will follow that swarm. And they're saying if the magma was on the way to look to erupt elsewhere, um, for example, the speculations were that it could go there to Altwerp or just south of Thorbjörn, um, we would see intense earthquakes and deformation would be visible clearly in these areas on the measuring instruments and on the satellite images. And they're saying that there are no signs of this at this point. So I guess it's another waiting game. But why are they in panic then? Let's have a closer look at the other earthquakes that have occurred. So it seems that there that this is really something unusual that is happening because there's another headline in the Icelandic newspapers today that says we're in a place we've never seen before. And, you know, of course, they're talking about the 90 earthquakes that were happening yesterday and that, that those are related to the tension movements on the Reykjanes Peninsula. So that should not be a major concern. Scientists say about this incident in, a, in an interview today that they don't have signs that the magma is directly trying to push somewhere else. But what they're saying is that there is a lot of uncertainty in relation to those earthquakes on the peninsula as a whole. And of course, they're saying they're monitoring, but you know, they're saying it's difficult to say what these earthquakes, where they will lead to, what's the result of these earthquakes. So basically what I said, they know that they don't know the problem that they're also having is the land is rising underneath Short Sangi, although the eruption is still going. And they're saying, well, now we have a difficult situation that we haven't had before. There is an eruption and it's not entirely clear what it means that the land rise basically keeps going like it did before the last eruptions that occurred because now there is already a channel open that's sending the magma out to the eruption site and he, that's why they're saying we're in a place that we haven't seen before and all we're doing is we're just watching they're just watching they can't really tell what's going on and in this uncertainty i think you know you should exercise a high level of caution and I'm not going to say this, but you know, guys, what I would like to talk about, a place that doesn't exercise enough caution, in my opinion. But my lips are sealed. I'm not going to say it, but you know what I want to say. So let's have a look at the earthquakes maps that are published on the Icelandic Metrological Office. And, you know, you see a graph down there in red, orange, yellow, and two shades of blue. And the red area, that's what uh, we also want to look at. That that are earthquakes that happened only like in a time frame, like zero to four hours ago. And then the orange area, that's, that's happened like four to 12 hours ago. So you see where you have a lot of cluster, that's the Reykjanes Peninsula. So this is all of Iceland. And you can see the orange dot on the left bottom. That are the earthquakes that are happening on that rift zone, the North Atlantic Ridge. It's happening out in the ocean, but this is a ridge that goes through, basically divides Iceland. So it's also important to look at this because if the two tectonic plates are making a larger move, it affects Iceland as well. And then, of course, the blue dots, that's 24 to 36 hours away. And then there you can see the graphs that show the magnitude. And there you can see on Monday the orange dots. Some of them go up to 3 and almost 3 in magnitude. So that's not minor. Remind 
yourself of what I said for volcanic activity this is something that needs to be looked at so we're not having like six or seven all the time with volcanic activity so anything that's above two needs to be carefully looked at and if you remember if you're following my channel for quite a while which i hope i do and by the way please leave this video a like this would help my channel a lot and if you're new here hi i would love to have you as a subscriber so if you could subscribe you'll be notified you know when i release new updates about this so these earthquakes need to be looked at because in the past, whenever we saw these eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula, we had an earthquake swarm with a lot of earthquakes in magnitude one or lower, but there were also like higher ones to magnitude two or higher. We didn't really see like the really high ones, five, six, seven, no, right? But a cluster of earthquakes with some that exceed two or even three, that tells us that magma might be on the move. So here we see these isolated in a higher range and not too many uh, cluster swarms here in the orange dot, but there is some cluster in, in one and below one. So it should give us a little bit of a concern, right? And especially if we look back to Monday and Sunday, there were clusters, there were a lot of clusters and they were below two, but some exceeded two. So is it only a tension release? I'm not 100% convinced of that, honestly. And you know, why are they mentioning panic? They're not really explaining why the country is in panic, but you know, Maybe they're thinking that something more is happening with the tectonic plate movements because there is something out in the ocean. It's 200 kilometers away, but look at that ridge that goes through there. And then you can click, this is whole Iceland, but you can also click just on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And there you see the same thing. Um, we have a lot of blue dots in the area where Grindavik is on Sunday, but we also have, you know, other areas here that you can see with lots of blue and yellow dots. And that is basically all along that ridge where the two continental plates are separating from each other. And there you can see a high one, almost three on Monday. And then you can even um, then have another map that, that is the Reykjanes Ridge. So that shows more the continental rift zone. And there you can see the three earthquakes that happened on the ridge, but out in the ocean. And there you see that is like basically Monday and they were all in higher magnitude in size. And I guess that's why they are concerned because this could indicate some more tectonic movement and we always know if the two tectonic plates are moving away from each other magma could come to the surface we already have one eruption going so will there be another one is that why they panic well it remains to be seen guys and of course i wouldn't be on the pulse with silky if i didn't keep you on the pulse with me so stay tuned as i said please give it a like and i hope to see you very very soon guys i'll investigate this further and then i will let you know but i thought you know since this just happened i'll shoot it out there and i'll let you know about this so thanks for watching guys i see you very very soon bye bye